Is patience punishing the Denver Broncos in their head coaching search to the point it could make them miss out on one of their top candidates? On top of that, could a sleeper emerge as the favorite as we get all these different conflicting reports about the Broncos head coaching search and what is deemed to be finalist week? You get that and much more from the South Stands to the end zone on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome into a brand new episode of Locked On Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much for tuning in, making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day. You can get this podcast free and available everywhere you get your podcast in audio format, or you can watch us on YouTube. Do us a favor, hit that subscribe or that follow button so you never miss out on a day's worth of Denver Broncos news, content, coverage, and more. I'm your host, as always, Cody Rourke, Broncos reporter for Mile High Sports. Join alongside, as always, by my co-host and my good friend, Sarah Bettinger. On top of that, Sarah, yesterday I felt like we discussed, okay, this is the move the the next Broncos head coach should make when they're appointed. And we're like, all right, this is going to be the week we figure out who the finalists are for the job. Here we are sitting here recording this and realistically not having an idea who is going to get a second interview. And as it's been reported as well, one of Denver's candidates that they supposedly had an interview with, that's now been delayed we have no idea what's going on in Broncos country, but I think there's a question that deserves to be asked here, and, and I understand the Walton Penner family ownership groups need to be patient and go through second interviews, 100% necessary. But is patience punishing the Broncos in their head coach search? That's a fair thing to ask at this point in time. It is, and it's leading others to ask, are the Broncos actually going to get their top candidate, or are they going to miss out? And I think that a lot of people... You know, you could point to the Jim Harbaugh thing, right? If the Broncos thought Jim Harbaugh was one of their top two candidates, as was reported, right? People were saying that it was Jim Harbaugh and Sean Payton atop the list initially, right? And we don't know necessarily how the interview process has changed things. But let's say Jim Harbaugh was 1A or 1B in your coaching search. Has patience caused you to miss out on him? You know, and I know he hasn't signed any contract with Michigan, so... Who knows, Cody? Maybe he's still a dark horse in this whole thing. I have no idea. Who knows what money talks? We know that we've been saying that. But look, other teams have been scheduling second interviews, which we're going to get into throughout the course of the show. But as of right now, the Broncos are not one of those teams. As of we're recording this, and like you joked yesterday during our episode, like, watch, as soon as this gets published, there's going to be some kind of news out there. So if you're listening to this and the Broncos did schedule second interviews, just know that we were on here talking about it before that happened. But it's, it's still, I would say, considering what everyone had been saying initially, and by everyone, I mean people who cover the Broncos specifically, telling us to pay attention to these dates. Look to January 23rd. Remember when Mike Kliss made his prediction of who would be the head coach, it was like a, an interview on like a Thursday or Friday. And they said a week from now, who's the Broncos head coach? And he said, I don't know about a week from now, but Monday, the, the 23rd, I think it'll be Sean Payton or something like that. I'm paraphrasing. But then you had Benjamin Albright who said to circle the 24th as the day to kind of keep in mind. And, and so I think that definitely, Cody, we're to the point now where it's like, okay, we don't even have second interviews that we know about. Maybe the Broncos know about them, but it's all kind of confusing. Well, for the Broncos, they wrapped up the first round last Friday, right? And as we're recording this on Tuesday morning, there has been nothing scheduled. With Okay, they're going to meet together over the weekend. That was what was reported. Broncos ownership will meet over the weekend, and they will discuss who the finalists are, and then they'll set up interviews so far. You know, like I said, Tuesday mid-morning, as we're recording this podcast, nothing is coming out. Nothing has been set in stone. And as you mentioned, yeah, it's probably going to happen where – We publish this and the news is already out. So just a a disclaimer for those that are watching or listening potentially on Wednesday. But, you know, for me, this head coaching search has immediately turned from, okay, here's what the Broncos need to, this is a very confusing turn of events this week in particular. I wanted to reference a scene out of The Waterboy that has, I think, how you and I are feeling and how many in Broncos country are feeling. Remember the scene where Bobby Boucher goes into where Coach Klein is in his office and he's watching film because they're just so terrible and he wants to be the water boy. And Coach Klein's like, hey, come to this board here. And he's like inspired. And he goes, once the quarterback has the ball, 
He fakes to the left. No, he fakes to the right. He thinks about faking. He pretends to fake. I don't know where I am. And he sits down like, I can't breathe. This is how we feel right now. We're just, this is confusing at this point in time because there are other teams out there like the Arizona Cardinals. We know the Houston Texans, they got a jump on getting a second interview with Broncos defensive coordinator, Giro Evro. A lot of these other teams are moving to kind of solidify their stance. And right now it's just like nothing's coming out of Denver. So is, is this a fair question to ask that? Okay, we, we knew that the Broncos ownership group is really inexperienced from the football side of things. Is this where that is impacting them in this head coaching search? Well, Cody, I just had a quick, I was, I just have to get this water boy impression off my chest really quick. Cause Mr. Coach Klein, the Broncos fans are so frustrated because they're like alligators with so much teeth. They got, they got no toothbrush. I, I think that Broncos fans are understandably frustrated with this whole thing, Cody. And I get it because look, I'm one of the ones that wants things to move along. I said that on yesterday's episode, we want to see this happen and, it's not happening. That doesn't mean that things aren't happening behind the scenes. What does it even mean that Sean Payton's second interview was delayed? Remember the Jeff Duncan, who I got his name wrong yesterday. Jeff Duncan reported that he was going to have a second interview on Wednesday. Then people said that it wasn't going to happen. The, this interview wasn't happening. And, and now he's saying this interview is delayed. Or he said that Sean Payton was going to fly to Denver in anticipation of a meeting. And like, who does that? I don't know what is going on still today. I know yesterday we said we don't know what's going on still today. I don't know what's going on, Mr. Coach Klan. I need I need you to tell me what to do out here, Mr. Coach. I, and that's, you know, as frustrated as Bobby Boucher was transitioning from being the water boy to playing on the field, you know, maybe – I don't know. I, I feel the same way. I'm just so confused right now by all that's going on. You got a, you got Coach Klein and doesn't know what he's doing. It, something's got to happen, right? And, you know, it will eventually. Like, we'll be looking back on this kind of laughing at, you know, a couple days over the course of, you know, the, the it's the off season, right? These things do get dragged out from time to time. We just want to see things happening. or We want a little bit of news to talk about. But here we are. You know, we don't necessarily have it right now, although – there are developments, I think, that you could kind of read between the lines of what the Broncos are doing. And, and I know we're going to talk about that here with these candidates that are lining up second interviews, teams that are lining up second interviews. I wonder, Cody, what we can read into from the Broncos perspective on things, given what these other teams are doing. Part of me is also wondering, is all that we're getting right now in these last 48 hours about the head coach search, I mean, is it sleight of hand? Is it smoke and mirrors? Because it was reported, Sean Payton, as you mentioned, inter it will interview on Wednesday. And then everybody, all the insiders, because I think that that was not supposed to get out because that came from Payton's camp, they were like, hey, hey, okay, we're doing damage control here. I think it's still going to happen. I just, at this point in time, it's like, what can we believe at this point in time, the head coaching search here for the Broncos continues to ramp up in Broncos country. One thing is for certain, we'll have you covered every step of the way. One of the things we're going to talk about on today's episode of the show, one of the latest updates featuring Sean Payton, who is perceived as a finalist, Dan Quinn, who has some second interviews lined up with some other NFL teams. What could this mean for the Denver Broncos? You get that on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos. This episode of the show is brought to you by our friends at Ultimate Football GM. If you've ever wanted to be an NFL general manager, now you can take control of a franchise and steer the entire operation all from the palm of your hand with Ultimate Football GM. You'll manage every strategic aspect of your team. You get to play through seasons, and you get to lead your team to glory to try to build a dynasty. With Ultimate Football GM, you're responsible for controlling the destiny of your franchise by hiring the right coaches and the coordinators trading players and navigating your franchise through free agency and the draft and all the ups and downs of a season. All of this in a challenging and realistic game world, Ultimate Football GM is completely free and playable offline. Play on the go as you want and when you want to. We've created a Lockdown League for you to compete against other Lockdown fans all around the world. Can you be the Ultimate Lockdown Football GM? Choose the Lockdown League in the app to join. Can you create a football dynasty? Lockdown Broncos listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo Locked On in all caps in the game store. That's code Locked On in all caps to make sure to check it out today. To download the game, just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up on the app stores. That's ultimate-gm.com. Ultimate Football GM. Start your dynasty today. What are the latest updates on potential finalist candidates like Dan Quinn, defensive coordinator of the Dallas Cowboys, and Sean Payton, as we all know, former head coach of the New Orleans Saints? 
a lot of smoke and mirrors going on here, but while the Broncos apparently are waiting and being patient with the process, other teams are taking advantage in what we all know is a cutthroat business where you got to strike when the iron is hot. Other teams are seemingly doing that, but let's take a look at Sean Payton. And as you and I discussed in the previous segment here on today's episode of the show, is patience going to potentially cost the Broncos and maybe missing out on Payton if he is their top candidate? I think that's a very valid question to ask considering the circumstances here because realistically, Sean Payton has the leverage in this whole entire process. He can say, okay, it's either Denver, like I want to go to Denver, but if they're not going to show as much interest in me, they're not going to court me. They're not, you know, for those that watch The Bachelor, you have your fiance or wife that watches The Bachelor, you understand exactly what this is, getting the rose. Sean Payton wants the rose here and I don't know if the Broncos are willing to give it to him right away, right? They want to go through and interview everybody they believe is a finalist. Could that ultimately cost them a chance at Peyton if he is their top candidate? Well, it could. I, I mean, I suppose anything's on the table. I think that the difference between these two sides, look, the Broncos have been very tight-lipped, whereas Sean Payton has just flat out gone on TV and talked about the process, talked about who he's meeting with, talked about the cost to trade for. I mean, he's been he's been an open book you know, in the public eye. And we're seeing that behind the scenes, he's also spilling a lot of tea. So we know, what do we know about Sean Payton right now, Cody? It seems like he'd be very interested in the Broncos job for the right price. We also know this. I, I'm no detective and I certainly wouldn't claim to be Cody, but I do, you know, put on the tinfoil hat from time to time. Has anybody else noticed that whenever Sean Payton has an interview with a team, the day of that interview, some other rumor pops up about something else that he could be doing or another team that he could be talking to on Monday. He was scheduled to have his in-person interview with the Panthers, right? What news broke on Monday? Well, he's going to be interviewing with the Arizona Cardinals, right? When he had the Denver Broncos interview uh, last week, remember the news that came out? Oh, he's already met with the Houston Texans and he has an interview scheduled with the Carolina Panthers this weekend. Now we're getting to the point that his interview with Carolina's done. We're getting ready for him to potentially do second interviews. Now what's coming out? Well, he he might be wanting to go back to TV. There could be a mystery team that wants to hire him still if they get their ducks in a row, right? I, I mean, there's just there's so much stuff going on with Sean Payton right now that I kind of get this vibe like, does he really want to coach the Denver Broncos? And has that not turned anybody else off? Like I, I would have been all about gung ho over Sean Payton being the, the next head coach. When we're talking about, he wants to work with Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson has legally reached out to Sean Payton's people to talk about how he wants him <laughs> to help and fix him. I mean, th that kind of stuff is the stuff that everybody wanted to hear, right? We, we want to hear that Sean wants to be with the Broncos, but look, I keep coming back to this man. If he doesn't want to coach the Denver Broncos, Really deep down, if he really if he's really threatening to go back to TV over dollars and cents or over Russell Wilson or over an assistant coach that he wants to bring with, does he really want to be your head coach? How many concessions do you need to make? You have to give up a first rounder for him. You have to give up our almost twenty million dollars a year potentially for him, resetting the head coach market. You have to let him build his staff, which I think is fine. But there's so many concessions that you already have to make. Does an ownership, does the Broncos ownership group, Cody, like somebody else's plan better? And what do these other teams know? Because look, we're not hearing anything, you know, from major reporters, really. I mean, let's just be honest. Everything that happened and came out on Monday was a big nothing burger of nothing. We, we have no idea anything concrete that the Broncos are doing, but it was unseasoned other meat. Yeah, unseasoned <laughs> meat. Exactly. Don't you think, though, these other teams know? what the Broncos are doing or what they're planning based on their conversations with the same candidates. Like they're talking to D'Amico Ryan's people. They're talking to Dan Quinn's people. They're talking to Sean, Sean Payton's people and they're figuring out what, do, well, what do we have to do in an adjustment to what the Broncos are doing? I think there's something to that. So there's something to be said about what Sean Payton is planning and Dan Quinn, who's another perceived top target of the Denver Broncos. The leverage game is, is being played in full effect here. And to be honest with you, the Broncos have no leverage when it comes to a guy like Sean Payton. They really don't. He's got all the leverage. He's got all the power in his situation. So, I mean, is that something that the Broncos want to get themselves involved with? Right. I mean, it, Already, I mean, you get the sense with this whole interview process and with everything that's going on, because Peyton has the power to pick and choose really where he wants to go, I mean, is he almost abusing that? And is that a power struggle that the Broncos ownership is sitting there and they're like, huh, I'm not sure we want to play this game, right? If he's doing to the, this to us now, what might he do 
when he's the head coach. Now, it's a little different when he's the head coach because ultimately he reports to ownership, and ownership has the power in that situation. But right now, ownership is kind of powerless when it comes to Peyton. As it pertains to Dan Quinn, I mean, he's also this week had some more interest ramping up from other NFL teams. He has a second interview lined up with the Arizona Cardinals. I believe that's coming this week. On top of that, Sean Payton is scheduled to meet with the Cardinals on Thursday. So there are a lot of things going on. If Dan Quinn's already getting a second interview that quickly, I mean, could they be moving towards Dan Quinn in Arizona versus, and you know, maybe versus Denver? Like in a situation like this, I, Denver could lose out on maybe some of their top candidates if things are playing out the way that maybe we, we perceive it, right? But then again, there's a whole other element that's going on behind the scenes that nobody besides ownership is really aware of. And so that's where we're all sitting here as media. That's where fans are all sitting out in the dark just saying, hey, what the heck's going on here? Exactly. I mean, that, you, you said it perfectly, Cody, and I think that that's exactly where everybody's at right now. And specifically, when you look at the situation with Dan Quinn, you know, he was kind of pitched early on as that big swing potential guy among the Jim Harbaugh and Sean Payton. So what happens if you have these three perceived big swings? Now the Broncos miss out on all three of them, right? If Dan And Dan Quinn supposedly only wanted the Broncos job last year. Was that the case this year? Or or did he kind of adjust his plans based on, again, knowing what the Broncos are, are thinking, what they're doing, who their top three is? Remember, I remember you said, Cody, you didn't think necessarily – that Quinn was going to be in the Broncos top three, yeah. the finalists. And I agree with you on that because look, I think that if you want to hire a, a big swing guy right now, the big swing is, is Sean Payton. If you want to take a big risk, I think the big risk is David Shaw bringing him from the college ranks. And if you want to you know, go with a first time guy, I think there, there's an obvious candidate out there for the best first time candidate. And that's D'Amico Rides. And I know we're going to talk about those two guys specifically here coming up. Why why you shouldn't be sleeping on those guys? Because it seems like the Broncos are being passive, bordering on apathetic here. But is there something else brewing behind the scenes, right, Cody? Like, do they have a new favorite in the building that we just simply haven't heard through NFL reporting channels? Like, it, it seems like all the pieces are lining up for something like that to potentially happen, which would surprise and maybe even anger a lot of the fan base, but at the same time, like I mentioned in yesterday's episode, maybe hiring one of those guys is the best move for this franchise, the organization. I think there's a lot of interesting points that you make there and something we're going to dive into on today's episode of the show as to are some of the sleepers maybe becoming favorites behind the scenes. You'll get that on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos. This episode of the show is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel and the NFL playoffs are here and we're really excited about our new sports betting partner for Lockdown because they're the number one sports book in America, FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better because they have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. New customers, join today to get started with $150 in free bets guaranteed. When you place your first $5 bet, just sign up at FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel has all your favorite bets from the money line to point spreads to player props. Plus, you can even combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same game parlay. Big time coming up here with Championship Weekend. All on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use so football fans don't miss out. Place your first $5 bet to get $150 in free bets, win or lose, at FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Could several sleeper candidates for the Denver Broncos head coaching search end up being favorites behind the scenes? Thank you so much, Broncos country, for tuning in, making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day, free and available everywhere you get your podcast in audio format, or you can watch us on YouTube. Just a reminder, so you get this show every single day, make sure you hit that subscribe or that follow button because we literally have you covered every single day all year long on the latest going around Broncos country because for the true fan, there is never in off season. We have you covered here, Lockdown Broncos. We kind of alluded to this in the prior segment, Sarah, talking about Broncos head coaching candidates. We talked about Dan Quinn, Sean Payton, but you alluded to it. Could some of the sleepers, why, you know, Broncos country shouldn't sleep on some of these sleeper candidates who could end up becoming favorites. I think we absolutely have to talk about D'Amico Ryans because I even put it out on Twitter in response to, you know, a mile high sports poll that was put out there about the, you know, four candidates, who would you most like? I think the longer that it drags out and that Sean Payton isn't the guy, if he isn't, I think there's a real possibility D'Amico Ryans could be 
maybe one of the favorites for the job. And and maybe is the Broncos' patience all because of the fact that they really can't do another interview with D'Amico Ryans? They can't make a move because D'Amico Ryans is still coaching right now deep inside the NFC playoffs. I mean, I think these are things to consider in this possibility. That is, uh, and I think that's exactly where the Broncos are at right now because I think you and I both would agree. We expected D'Amico Ryans to go in and absolutely kill the interview and do a great job. Not kill it in a bad way, but kill it in a good way. Go in there and give an amazing plan. Outline why he is the best potential leader for the team. Look, and, and I've been saying this from the start. Of course, you know, everybody's kind of tending to lean towards the experienced guys in this coaching race because the Broncos have had first time guys and it hasn't worked out. And so, well, why would D'Amico Ryan's work out? And I just want to point to the fact that three first time head coaches this year, Kevin O'Connell, Brian Dayball, Mike McDaniel, they all made the playoffs. Why? Because they built great coaching staffs and they did a, a much better job at managing the entire team than we saw from Nathaniel Hackett in Denver. D'Amico Ryans could come in, Cody. I wish that we could know because I think this would drastically change perception on these guys. I wish we could know what his staff was going to look like or the potential of his staff beforehand so that more fans could get on board with the idea of D'Amico Ryans because – I think he would build an exceptional staff. I personally would love to get that 49ers DNA in Denver because everybody wanted Kyle Shanahan back in 2017. We would have loved to have had that. And what we've seen him build in San Francisco has been special. I know they haven't won a Super Bowl, but man, they're about to go to their, is this their third time going or, you know, third time going to the championship game at least. So they are they're very good under him. There's it's a well-run operation. We've seen Robert Sala have success outside of San Francisco. And, and I think that, you know, obviously you're grading on a bit of a curve there. He took over a dumpster fire in New York, but Cody, look, I, I want to see that 49ers DNA in Denver any way we can. And who would D'Amico Ryan's bring with him? Like it, what if he was bringing Gary Kubiak with him? Or what if man, what if he had Mike Shanahan coming out of retirement to do consulting for his offense? I mean, you could look at any number of different things, but pairing a young head coach with a veteran staff has proven that it can work in the NFL. And it's it's not a hundred percent success rate, but man, I think D'Amico Ryan's is one of those sleepers that deserves a ton more credit from Broncos country as a viable candidate. And look, I, I know we've even talked about David Shaw, and I think if you look at our YouTube comments, if you look at any posts we've done on Twitter about head coaching candidates, Broncos country is very adamantly against David Shaw for the most part. Like There's some that are like, hey, I would actually welcome this move. And everybody's referencing the fact that, oh, he had all these losing seasons, he was worse than Denver. We're talking about a different game here. We're talking about college, where the college is very slanted towards how good you are at recruiting, NIL deals now, everything like that, and, and what conference you're even competing in. And we talked about it. At Stanford, I mean, you expect Stanford to be able to compete with LSU, with Alabama, with Ohio State, Jordan. Like, come on. Like, we can't even expect a, a Pac-12 team to do that. And look, TCU made it as far as they did. We saw what happened when TCU played a really legitimate team. It was, it was one of the worst national championship blowouts ever. I mean, it was one that nobody watched. I mean, it kicked off literally at 5 o'clock p.m. Mountain Time, 4 o'clock p.m. Pacific Time because nobody honestly really cared. Everybody thought it was going to be a blowout, and it ended up being a blowout. I, there's a, I, I think it's unfair to compare how a coach did at the college level, specifically in the Pac-12, when realistically his last couple of seasons, yeah, they, they weren't winning as many games. You look at his total body of work in his career where they've won games. I mean, he's coached guys like Christian McCaffrey, guys like Andrew Locke. He is a well-respected coach in NFL League circles. I can tell you that speaking to people that I have spoken to about David Shaw. On top of that, though, you can't compare record at the college level to the NFL. It's an entirely different game. And I think if you're using that to kind of crit criticize David Shaw being a potential option, I think that's a very unfair lens to criticize him with. It is, Cody. And one thing that people need to understand about David Shaw, and you cannot emphasize this enough, you cannot emphasize it enough, QB development, right? You mentioned Andrew Luck, but you could go back through a number of Stanford quarterbacks through the years, recent years, right? I mean, obviously different levels of NFL success, but you're talking about developing guys into 
potential NFL caliber players, guys who have started games at the NFL level or will start games. And I'm probably forgetting some names, Cody, but in addition to the number one pick, Andrew Luck, look at guys like Kevin Hogan, Davis Mills, Tanner McKee this year. And I'm sure there's others over the course of the last 10, 15 years that have come from Stanford to be in the NFL and to play games or at least be backups. So that's something to me that I think can't be overlooked. QB development with David Shaw under his watch at Stanford. And obviously Jim Harbaugh had some to do with that. But after he left, I mean, he didn't. It was David Shaw's show to run. So that's huge because the Broncos are going to need somebody to not just help Russell Wilson get to the next level. But let's say Russell Wilson is not at that same level. Let's say he does play again at the 2022 level. You need somebody to come in and develop a quarterback, a young guy. Who better equipped in this coaching cycle than David Shaw, right? I, I mean, I know there's um, some people would probably argue that, but he has proven, at least at the collegiate level, he can develop these guys. He can take whether they're a two star or a four star or a five star and make them into an NFL caliber quarterback, helping them build their skill set and arsenal. I mean, Davis Mills, he came out of no way, he was injured. He played 13 games, started 13 games at Stanford and was the top pick of the Texans draft that year. So, I don't know. I mean, Cody, that's a big thing that I think people need to consider here. Not only that, but like you said, you can't judge him based on what he did at the college level in terms of how he would manage an NFL team. Like that's that's completely different. And like you said, he's well respected. He's been highly coveted by the NFL in the past. It wouldn't be as exciting, I think, of a, of a hire as it would have been four or five years ago when Stanford was still killing it. But man, that guy always had good defenses. He always had a strong running game, always a physical offense. He, he was piping tight ends and offensive linemen into NFL pro style offenses for the longest time. Like Stanford is just this pipeline of, hey, you want a, you want a tight end? All right, here's Zach Ertz. You want an offensive lineman? Here's a couple, here's a couple guys. Andrews P. Andrews Pete played there, right? Andrews Pete and I, I, Walker Little started for the Jaguars this year. Tons of different guys, Cody, that, man, they, they come from this program. They're physical. They, they're they well coached. Disciplined. They're disciplined. They, I mean, see, look at you and I, we're on the same page here. So David Shaw, a very legitimate candidate, in my opinion, and shouldn't be overlooked, shouldn't be slept on in this process. Share Bettinger spitting facts on today's episode, Locked on Broncos. Broncos country, we are eager for your thoughts on the subject matter as the Broncos head coaching search continues a lock and change minute by minute in this situation. But let us know your thoughts on this episode. If you're watching on YouTube, drop them down in the comment section down below. Make sure you like this video and interact with other members of Broncos country. You want to share your thoughts with us? If you're listening on your favorite audio podcasting platform, you can always tweet us on Twitter at Cody Rourke NFL, at Sarah Bettinger, at Lockdown Broncos. We appreciate all of you so much for taking time out of your day to listen or to watch us break down all things Broncos country from an objective point of view. You'll never get any hot takes. You'll never get any clickbait. We like to look at everything from every side of the coin, and you get that here specifically, Lockdown Broncos. That'll wrap up today's episode of the show. Tomorrow's episode, we'll have you covered with the latest in the Broncos head coaching search because we will find out more as the days go on here as the Broncos inch closer to potentially hiring their next head coach. Lockdown Broncos is the place to be for the objective coverage you need and that you deserve here on the Lockdown Podcast Network.